Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of I Dry B. I am Lutch, your host, here with Captain Paul. And uh, today we have a pretty big and interesting topic about Ethan Klein there, everyone's favorite virtue signaler. Um, well, for you, that, for you that don't know, uh, Ethan Klein was currently dropped by all sponsors, but not don't let me tell the story. Uh, let's just get right into the video about Ethan Klein talking about how the sponsors uh, dropped him. Today we have no sponsors because uh, uh, I am an existential threat to uh, gay rights and all progress. So, of course, our wonderful uh, fans have taken upon themselves to read all of our sponsors and um, to have them uh, not sponsor or not to uh, support us. I'll just say this. I'm very thankful to our members because... It makes this show kind of uh, bulletproof to stuff like this. It's just painful that, you know, people would do that. So what exactly, I mean, he bring already brings up a point about uh, members. And my first question is, who are these people? Yeah. Who are these members? I mean, maybe Patreon. I don't, I don't really, like, I don't right. follow... I don't follow H3H3 that much. I've never really had much respect for Ethan Klein and with how he uh, condones his businesses because he tears down a lot of people beneath him. Um, the only thing I'll give him credit for is when he won that lawsuit against, uh, you know, the, with the fair use. I'll give right. him that. I'll give him his flowers regarding that. But I think Ethan Klein as a character is just, he has a lot of vitriol and anger against uh, Keemstar, but I think him and Keemstar are pretty much uh, like, that's like the, the same guy in the kettle, the black. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, it's it's the same exact guy, just different sides of the argument. So, you know, I, I don't know. I think with Ethan Klein, like he has some followers and stuff like that. But I think Jordan Peterson put it best, like the woke mob, like that you are confl like conforming to and taking down his interview with Jordan Peterson. Like this is all stuff that Peterson kind of prophesized oh, yeah. is now coming true. For those of you who don't know, like Ethan Klein used to be at least, if not well liked, well respected. Uh, you know, he was uh, early to YouTube and he was doing stuff that, you know, kind of opened up the platform. Um, but, I, you know, I kind of think that once the podcast started, um, which is I didn't really know him before that. So I really only know of him as of the, the podcast. And even even still, there was a time when I was uh, I was only I was never like a follower of them, but I had the clip channel. I was subscri subscribed to the uh, clip channel. And, uh, you know, every once in a while, they would have good guests and, you know, they would pick out funny stuff off the Internet to, to make fun of. And so, you know, I would just add it in with my, you know, normal news stuff just for to break up the news and, and have a little laugh. But hmm. it just got more and more and more vitriolic. And it just became yeah. about drama and bad takes on this and bad takes on that. And I think the, um, I, I think the worst thing Ethan did was kind of dip his toe into the political scene yep. when he's had his co-host co in there. I think it was Hassam who, uh, that you know, was the just, worst thing I've ever seen. It was yeah, the he, worst thing I've ever seen. That's it's where just, it's a terrible, it was a terrible idea because he dipped his toe into politics and he has no idea what he's talking about. And just, he's kind of conforming to the left wing politics. And for people that don't know Ethan Klein's humor before the podcast, like he used to do raunchy, raunchy humor. Right. And, uh, let's actually just go right into it. He had a, he, the, what this is coming from is he said some quote unquote homophobic remarks when he was some telling some jokes on his podcast. Um, it was kind of channeling the old Ethan, but uh, you know, let's just get right into his apology video and kind of uh, you know digest what's going on there. I was very insensitive to the caller, the whole pushing, the comment specifically where I was like, I could tell what you are based on your voice, or whatever. Very, very gross and bad. Okay, like I totally acknowledge that. Um, and the whole bottom diaper thing. Okay, I get I, I understand now. Like, what I said was offensive. I totally understand Dan's reaction to say, you know, just shut the fuck up and unsubscribe. Sometimes it just doesn't feel reasonable. This is what you get with Ethan, man. Like, this is... He pushes boundaries and he pushes buttons and it's not targeted. And this is the uh, the the uh, the resident uh, yes man who will just... Yep, absolutely. Every podcast has to have one. We gotta look for ours. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I could use uh, that kind of uh, ego boost in my I life. I mean, absolutely, and I bet um, I bet his jaw is pretty sore after he's done with Ethan. But I, I just think, like for me personally, 
you know, getting more into the context of this and like, you know, Ethan said a joke, uh, the guy, a caller called in, sounded extremely gay. So Ethan's like, oh, I can kind of already tell what your sexuality is just by you talking. That's not like, very woke. That's not very woke. And then he's also saying like, there's some essentially inference about bottoms and wearing diapers because they can't like hold in shit anymore and you know the caller called in try to argue that and like oh well like you just try to make it that like all bottoms are submissive i'm like well it, it, it was just a very like it was probably the the most left-leaning conversation i was gonna I've say heard that's in the, my fucking life that's the type of shit you get into over on that side of the aisle yeah and uh let's be honest i'm i'm all for the jokes i think comedy is the best way to kind of have these dialogues i think uh everyone should be open to be ribbed you know a lot of people are openly mocked and i think hey like everyone should be fair game uh, i don't think there was inherently anything wrong with ethan's joke was it in poor taste yes but a lot of comedy is in poor taste a lot of comedy is not supposed to be uh, and that's what the, one of the issues i have with a lot of comics these days is they, they're no longer funny they're just like political pundits giving their takes on world issues right and that getting that clapter exactly so it's just you know i don't like ethan klein i think ethan like ethan klein is a scumbag but in this circumstance, I'm going to give him a little bit of leeway here. I do think it's kind of, I, I do think it's kind of a joke. People got so upset over this, right? It's just, it's a dude saying an off color joke like he used to, but to be fair, Ethan Klein dug his own grave with this. He's all been about this woke uh, cancel culture. He's all been a canceling people, you know, it's deplatforming, getting rid of people like Jordan Peterson off his platform. And what Peterson said, and we're going to put it on the uh, screen. Definitely. It's just like, man, like what, what you're doing, caving to them, like them eating him alive at first, essentially I'm paraphrasing here. Like they're going to come for you next. Dr. Jordan Peterson here says if i can get my mouse over here you will be held to a higher and higher and soon impossible to maintain ethical standards by the very mob you currently wish to please mm -hmm. this was when he took uh ethan klein took down the uh appearance from dr uh jordan b peterson on the h3 hd uh podcast and he took it down mm -hmm. you know and was just uh i don't know if he ever gave like a uh, a long explanation but I think it was, um, and, and I didn't look too far into it. But I'm pretty uh, sure. So it's... I can I, I can actually speak upon that. He talked about it. He says he didn't. What Ethan said at the time is he didn't really know P Peterson's politics at the time, which by the way was bullshit because that's why Jordan Peterson got so popular. Right. And then uh, secondly, he said that he didn't necessarily align with his views anymore. And it was just it was a disgusting cowardice to see Ethan Klein just cower to the woke mob. So that it, like he. He essentially bowed down and let them, you know, essentially make him into a bottom. Well, yes. That's how I fucking talk to people on this show. Yeah. I find it interesting to make people squirm a little bit or make uncomfortable, ask the what questions that Lord. you know you shouldn't. I like to create these situations. I think they're interesting. Right. Let's yeah. check our tone a little bit. What the fuck? Did I really perpetuate a horrific stereotype? Top, bottom stuff, whatever. A, a joke in poor taste. Some people, I think, are too sensitive to watch this show. It really oh makes my me God. understand why people like Tim Pool and Steven Crowder and Dave Rubin and all these fucking goons on the right that are just vile freaks. So the okay, people... wait, 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 wait. So it's perfectly okay. Go on, it's son. It's perfectly fucking okay for Ethan Klein to, to say whatever he wants to say. But on the flip side, guys that aren't like insulting or mean, like Tim Pool, Dave Rubin. He calls them goons and douchebags. Yeah, I mean, does, does that make is, any sense? Is that, does Crowder that sound can, like hypocrisy to you, Lutch? Is that just me? I mean, to be fair, Crowder can be quite insulting. As I always say, Crowder is the one guy that you're not, uh, you're not, if you don't already agree with him, you're not going to like him. Yeah. But I rarely find, uh, like, when, where, when is he wrong? Show me when he's wrong. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, just the, the typical leftist uh, uh, hypocrisy of the ends justify the means, and it doesn't matter if we're doing the same thing. I'm working towards this utopia, and you're working towards damaging our democracy. Yeah, it's like, bow down to me, peasants. Like, that's that's literally what Ethan's coming off as now. So sorry to interrupt your podcast experience. I just wanted to remind you, if you're enjoying what you're watching, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content. And if you really love it, there's some support links in the description. I would love if you could help out the channel. And back to the show homophobic uh 
like to say, oh, you think it's okay to make that joke. But some of y'all think you're doing a good thing genuinely. But I actually think that a lot of what's going on is making things much, much worse. Some people take it way too fucking far. Defensive much? I mean, like, bro, like, you're just, hey, you're just, you. this is what you created, Ethan. This is what you do with other people. Have a taste of your own fucking medicine, scumbag. And something tells me it's not bubblegum flavor. No. And it makes it way, way worse. Horrific? Yes. It's a strong word. Is Don't you it, think? Uh... Making a, a offensive joke is not horrific. I agree that I have tendencies and stuff that I'm working on. You know, what kind of fucking relationship are you in where every week you're not good enough? That's an abusive relationship. But like at a certain point, it's fucking just, it's not healthy. It's fucked up. You know, if you. I agree with him. I agree with him. And the idea is that, uh, you know, if he was uh, embodying these types of values all, uh, all along, then it would be a lot easier to stand up for him. Now, yeah, I 100%, like I said, I agree that it should not, uh, it should not be a case where uh, you're getting sponsors dropped, especially if this is so arguably your brand it's not like he was doing cooking shows and 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 then he he didn't off color joke like it's a comedy podcast and uh it, before hassan it was very it, uh, for the most part it was very apolitical not in the sense that they wouldn't take a side on things but it's like they're not researching this stuff yeah so they, they were more they were more into pop culture more talking right. about that things of that nature music movies stuff of that ilk but i i think the worst move that he ever did was get into politics because it, this this is a completely different realm and especially somebody like ethan um i was surprised he went with such a heavy left leaning side because it, man it's just they're gonna eat you alive like well, i don't i don't understand how we didn't expect this coming this is what the left does and uh, you're absolutely right and the the in, the most insidious part of it is that it makes sense to me that he was such a uh, he so perfectly embodies that normie left where he probably didn't understand how extreme Hassan is. He probably yeah. saw, oh, there's all these guys talking about politics. I have a big platform. I want to talk about politics. Let me bring in somebody who talks politics in his mind. Let me bring in somebody who knows what they're talking about. And, um, you know, and, and, and we'll do a, a show that way. And so well, yeah. by listening to the drivel, for, I don't know how long they did that show. I don't think they're doing it anymore. Um, but uh, I don't know how they could if Hassan's doing like 10 streaming hours a day or some shit like that. But anyway, the, however uh, long they uh, were doing that, it the the mentality, the, the ideology itself seeped into his mind. And so this is why he now feels like he can talk about certain people in a certain way. And uh, it's no big deal. Yeah, but if they were to, but he should get grace. He should be allowed to make offensive jokes because he's on the good side. Well, and and I, I guess the aggravating part for me is that uh, when I see this type of behavior from Ethan and this kind of victimhood bullshit, bro, you started a political podcast and you have essentially bowed down to Hassan's all his political views. Like I have unfortunately seen some clips, and Ethan puts up no fight. Like he has no backbone at all. It's like, not. Which, I, Honestly, None. knowing enough about the h 3 podcast in general, which isn't much, but I know enough that while Ethan is definitely the type of dude who will kind of chameleon his way into whoever he's uh, talking to just to get them to like him, mm -hmm. he used to at least, I mean, I can't think of anything in particular, but he used to not be that guy where he would just let anything fly. Like he would challenge you, you know, not necessarily in the political realm, but if there was something that he didn't agree with, so he would he would put it out there. And I don't even, again, I don't necessarily think it's that he had no uh, backbone when it came to Hassan. I think he just didn't know anything. And so the fact that uh, Hassan is, is embroiled in this, even if it's a terrible ideology, he does in fact know more about the goings on of, of Washington DC than Ethan or anybody on this team would. And so they just by de facto, they de facto were like, oh, he's the smartest guy, so he's probably right. And so now all of these things are in, in, ingrained and uh, he has no idea why the, the, uh, the Jordan Peterson um, tweet was absolutely prophetic. And again, yeah. just to just to, to to show here, you'll be held 
to higher and higher and soon impossible to maintain ethical standards by the very mob you currently wish to please. Then you will make a mistake and they will devour you mm -hmm. with glee. Please take this warning seriously. I liked you. So he didn't I, do that. I, I, I'll say this because I think there's pretty much we kind of tackled all of this subject, right? He lost his sponsors. He kind of cried about it. You know, he essentially got folded by the very left mob that he wanted on his channel. So all those fans, quote unquote, that are calling these sponsors, getting him canceled. Ethan, they were never your fans. They were never for your channel. Mm. They were never into you. That What they saw was a political pawn by Asan that it's like, oh, wow, like a song can get a bigger mouthpiece. No, Ethan's like this. But as soon as you saw like a little bit differencing of opinion or even a little bit of comedic you know, sense regarding very little. quote unquote sensitive subjects, little. they canceled you. Well, be because you didn't follow that dogmatic monolith that is the left. I don't know if I agree with that because I think w what, what I could see how I see this playing out in is that, you know, let's, uh, I'm not saying, you know, the day after or anything, but you're just using this as, as uh, milestones in the fall of, of H3, if we want to put it that way. There was uh, the original days, they were doing well, people, uh, you know, if they were either your flavor of comedy or they weren't, but again, they were respected in the community for what they were doing. Then they uh, they got big and they started the podcast and the podcast started. They were doing well. They were doing uh, their own thing, staying in their own lane. Great. Then they, over time, they, especially Ethan, got lazy and was, uh, you could see just in the, the regular podcast before politics, was, you could see it getting lazier and lazier and lazier and less production and well, let's just, just find a video and, and react to it. And uh, that's the whole podcast. And then just like make stupid jokes and then bring up inside jokes from the past to however many years. Then there was Hassan. So I'm pretty sure there was some stuff in between that was that like, you know, led, uh, you know, perpetuated that. I don't think anything big. Uh, but again, I don't follow um, uh, H3 that closely. So uh, if you do have some more details, please do let us know. But um, whatever that was, that led him to say, OK, let's bring on Hassan Piker. I mean, uh, I, effect I, effectively I just, known as Jenks nephew. But what, what I'm saying is this, is that someone like Hassan bring him onto your platform and he obviously has a buzz he has you know uh CYT relationship there obviously and you kind of you know you know what you're bringing into it and I think that Ethan knew bringing that type of person into you know the fold now you're essentially kind of getting rid of your free speech you're getting rid of the fun because now you can't really say any jokes you can't say anything politically incorrect you got to be very sensitive all the fucking time right you can't have you just can't have a sense of humor because right once you offend the left with something they don't deem as funny they're going to cancel you and this is just a prime example right. of it and that's and why so, i think i think he fell into this monolithic issue from the left absolutely but i think his big mistake was abandoning the real fans that he did did have i think those fans left him because he stopped doing the content that brought him to the dance Fair so enough. they left not because they're fair weather people but he stopped providing the content that they came for. So they left, and Hassan, being the name that he is, he brought in a whole new audience. So now, at that point, once Hassan's on the scene, now we're talking about dealing with the left. That's why Absolutely. these jokes that were uh, are so Ethan were never a problem before, because you weren't performing for the woke left before. But now yeah, he brought yeah. in Hassan, and, you know, no, I agree. I think we're actually kind of in lockstep here. I, I do like I thought Hassan brought more of a left audience, and that's kind of been his main poll now. And it just hey, when you bring that type of audience in and you say something in it, something completely insensitive or not in line with their views, you're just gonna get canceled. But yeah, you gotta call them views. They're sh sure as shit not values. I know that no, 100. Absolutely not. I think for me, we've said that's all really needed to be said. I think that it's uh, karma's a bitch. Karma is a bitch. I think there's, if there's anything to take away from this, it's that you should definitely listen to Jordan uh, Peterson. The man Absolutely. knows what he's talking about, and like even someone like my, uh, you know, someone like myself who is, um, 
very uh, anti-religious. And everything that he talks about is through the lens of Christianity. I can understand as not an idiot that he's not preaching to me. He's not trying to convert me to be uh, a Christian. He's trying to use the stories of Christianity to talk about the, the society we live in today. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people on the left, but either they know him as the anti-trans guy or some religious guy. And so mm -hmm. that that disqualifies him from, from a lot of people's minds. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, this is a smart guy. He knows Absolutely. what he's talking about. Absolutely. You know, it comes down to clean your room. So what do you think? Is Ethan coming back? Is Ethan done for good? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, definitely also check out the support links in the description. It is not free to do this with new people. Captain Paul coming on board. We are looking to expand and do lots, lots more. But unfortunately, that isn't free. So please do check out the support links. If you can't do that, that's totally cool. It is absolutely free to like, comment, and subscribe. And even if you don't want to do that and you just want to sit at home and think about how awesome we are and how great this channel is, do that too. Until then, we will see you next time. Peace.